So, how am I supposed to feel if I find a wheezing or a muck in my mouth? I'm Back Rolls. And I'm Mac Fraser, and welcome to the Nintendo Nerds, a series where we talk about art, design, and all things Nintendo. So stick around, because in today's video, we'll be talking about the weird collection of Nintendo and Pokemon announcements we received in place of our usual scheduled programming of an E3 Direct. So, E3 would have taken place about a week and a half ago, and that means usually big announcements, new trailers, and the like. But given what's been going on in our world these last few months, that obviously didn't happen. And honestly, that whole week for us as Nintendo fans was pretty quiet. It was, and it was a real bummer, to be honest. It made me a little blue because I'm not going to put the money into a PS5. I already know that. So I skimmed the news and I skimmed the announcements, but I did not sit down and watch the entire presentation this time because it's not being marketed to me. I was really hoping for something, and you know, I was just reflecting on it was a year ago that we got a banjo announcement. That was that was such a good time to be a Nintendo fan. <laughs> it really was. There was so much promise back then of what was coming, and banjo was 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 just a shining light in what was to be. Well, we had and then we had that. We had Luigi's Mansion. We had Animal Crossing trailers. There was a lot to be excited for on the horizon, and. The rumors now are beginning to circulate. Maybe Nintendo doesn't have anything for the holidays, which I I don't necessarily believe just yet. Honestly, I have to tell you that I take Nintendo rumors these days with like a grain of salt because it, they are just so wild. And the thing is, the things that you and I have fallen for, like even as recently as you know the Grinch Link or uh, Grinch Leap, where we were both <laughs> on board with that, right? Well, like, let's be honest, you and I both. You, <laughs> we yeah, we are. We we're, yeah, we we're gonna have that. We, we we're gonna have that it. chat. We, we had full to believe like, in the Grinch League. <laughs> yeah, we had full length conversations about like how we felt about it and what it would mean for us as fans of Smash and fans of Nintendo. But yeah, I gotta tell you, it's it's hard to believe some of this stuff these days. But it's tough because like Nintendo's not sharing anything. So kind of where do you get your news? Like I feel like sometimes we're both chomping at the bit for things. And you know, like there's been these rumors over the last couple months of you know um, Zelda's gonna get delayed and Mario Kart's gonna take its place and its place. And now Mario Kart is possibly getting delayed this year too. But honestly, like. You know, they waited until Paper Mario was basically ready, if not already ready, before showing it to us. And yeah, I don't know. It's 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 seeming like a really quiet year. I I really thought that they kind of delighted in getting the fans excited, but as we're speculating, maybe under new management they've decided to keep things a little more reserved for longer. It's very true. It's I agree with you though, it's kinda of one of these things that we've we've been kinda of used to this for the last couple of years and it's been nice to have. Like, we know that these things take time now, though. Like, that's the thing, is that back in the era of the PS2, you could probably make a game in, you know, 18 months to two years. We understand that it takes much longer now, but we kind of want to know, like, where our investment is going, right? Like, a console is not a cheap thing to buy, and I think just having things on the horizon to be excited about kind of helps, rather than the radio silence. I agree. And a lot of what we got this week was shadow drop surprise things and not things i Weird. would say are necessarily going to be the the headliner for sure they're not going to be the system seller and nintendo always bundles a switch with some kind of game they're trying to sell mm -hmm. whether it's it's been mar i really if i will fall out of this chair if they're like have you played mario odyssey <laughs> i just yeah. I, don't, I don't see that happening there's got to be oh, something God. I really just, I, I really hope not. I, I really was hoping for something something good to play, preferably multiplayer, before the end of the year. I anticipated Zelda's delay from day one, so if it ends up coming out next year, it's really no loss on me. And we're not even going to scratch the surface of the other games. We could do a whole other video on Where's Metroid, Where's Bayonetta. We probably will. But let's, let's go into the games that we actually got. We got some silly ones. Let's just jump right into the jump rope challenge i i why not it's it's a couple silly little rabbits and they challenge you to jump a hundred times a day and you might also have be having problems trying to get a copy of ring fit adventure i'm sorry everyone who didn't get it before shelter in place we told y'all we told y'all it was worth getting when we recapped our favorite games of 2019 i told you it was worth getting. that's right that's right you brought that up so that. 
I actually yeah. don't have that much guilt about having a copy of it myself. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I agree with you. I think the jump rope game was a nice little shadow drop, and it's free, right? It's free. Right? So yeah, it, it encourages you to get up and do something, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. And right before we started filming, today's the 18th. Nintendo just announced that Apex Legends is coming in the fall. Well, that's actually going to be an EA announcement as well, which is, uh, it's exciting to hear that that is going to have crossplay across all platforms. I have to be honest, this is something I've been waiting for. You've been listening to me these last couple months where I haven't paid for a PSN subscription, so I'm not playing Call of Duty anymore. That has been a big hole in my video game heart and honestly I think Apex could definitely help with that. I tried the the Fortnites and the Paladins but they just did not work for me. Apex is something that my brother's been playing on PS4 for a number of years now and I gotta tell you that I I'm excited. I think this is this was something you, seriously you told me like 10 minutes before we got started here and this is some this is the first bit of news in all honesty that I've received in a little bit that I'm quite excited for. I think that Apex is something that I'm really gonna enjoy. We love getting down when we have a solid group of four on Splatoon. It's mm -hmm. it's way more challenging to not have a group of four on voice chat comparatively, but I think, hey, Apex is a team of three. I was more into Fortnite than you were, but I also really didn't appreciate what it turned into as it continued to evolve. And Paladins, well, I had a really fun time with it. Had It still, to this day, has pretty horrendous loading times on the Switch. Apex is an exciting thing. I'm really excited about the cross-platform play. I just moved last summer quite far away from the majority of my family, so having the ability to play something online with my brother again would be Absolutely, and that's about all for the free-to-play and Shadow Drop announcements. There's more to come in the months to come. Uh, so we're getting Apex Legends in the fall, but there were a couple drops right away from the Pokemon Company this week. So I, I think we should just follow these in sequential order, and then I have a point of business to make at the end of this. But uh, So the first thing is Smile. Pokemon tell Smile. Me about, tell me about Smile, Backrolls. I'll, tell me about Smile. I'll tell you about Smile back. I think it is a silly little app that is not meant for you or I whatsoever. So of course I chuckle as that being the lead off. But I also think about when I was a kid how Mickey Mouse helped me learn to brush my teeth. I had like a little singing toothbrush and this is kind of just an evolution of that. You know, we are old enough that we could theoretically be parents of some little tiny toddlers and teaching them to brush with a smartphone I think is not necessarily the worst idea. It seems like a charming little game for kids but I call bullcrap. My mouth was squeaky clean and it did not let me catch a Pidgey in my trial run. So No way. I I scrubbed my mouth so freaking hard because it just kept saying like, no, you have to open your mouth and get more, get back further there. You, be, you should brush faster. And it's like, you should be advising me to do little circles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? It's it's a silly little game, and if it makes children brush their teeth, then great. It's a free little thing. I hope we don't find out it's stealing people's face data. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, fingers crossed on that. I think it really shows how they're trying to broaden horizons with with Pokemon. Like, the thing is, you know, with Nintendo getting involved in these, you know, uh, amusement park ventures and all that kind of stuff, you really want your IPs to reach out to a broad audience. And I think of the things that Nintendo, like the properties Nintendo's got, I think Pokemon has a really good ability to do that because we have so many gamers like you and I who have grown up with this, who still buy the games and play the games. And then, you know, you, you create things like this. And these are characters and things that kids are going to remember from a very young age. We can say without hyperbole that Pikachu is as recognizable an icon as Mickey Mouse in today's pop Seriously. culture. Seriously. It, 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 it has become that. In all, and uh, and in all honesty. especially in the past five years, and I love to see it, nerd culture and like nerd fashion. Like there's amazing Pokemon merchandise and clothing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after and then Smile, we, we Cafe have, Mix. And then we have Cafe Mix. I, I back with, I, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I... So I wrote notes as I watched this thing yesterday. I literally wrote Cafe Mix, I have no words. Like I really, <laughs> I, I really just don't. I just, and it's not to say that I'm not into a Pokemon puzzle game. There was that, uh, Pokemon Puzzle League. Incredible that, game. I, with, 
Was that the one on the 3DS and also on like mobile? N64 is the one I'm thinking of. Like, it oh. was a terrific Pokemon puzzle game back in the day. So like but, you could do that, but what? I don't know what this is. I don't even get the, as you swirl, the puzzle swirls, it, I, I love a free to play puzzle game. I love a free gacha puzzle game that I don't have to take that seriously, that I can just put like a couple seconds into, but I don't really know what I'm looking at with Cafe Mix. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't understand the puzzling, and with that, I'm not sold. I'll, I'll give it a try because we're the Nintendo nerds and I give most of these things a try, but... Uh. I'm thankful you do because I won't be putting this on my phone. <laughs> Or my, or my I, Switch. I will do... I, down I downloaded Mario... I will do the cafe I, mix. It's all good. Back. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I downloaded Mario Kart Tour, and I think I got all of 10 minutes of playtime out of that. So, no. Nope, not doing it. Not into this. Uh, well, this next game, I have to say, was... Well, it's absolutely the highlight of... Twitter is blowing up about this, and it's the highlight of my personal presentation... Of the Pokemon presentation for me. You said you didn't have a connection to the last game, but I'm so excited we're getting a new Pokemon Snap, Mac! Mm, I really don't have too many opinions on this. Uh, I, I, I rented it once when I was younger, and like I see the appeal and I see that it's fun, but I just... This is gonna be a $90 game for me! Like, I can't, I can't justify that. There's no way that this game that is going to be over in hours, and I understand there's there's going to be some replay value to it. I just, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I really have no interest in this. And yeah, that's about it. And and why does it get to look better than a mainline series Pokemon game? Well, it, it, I'll defend that right away because it looks so good because it's an on rails game. And, I suppose. And with I that, a, a pre-rendered environment where one Pokemon's going through one motion is way easier to make than the, everything they're doing in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Mm -hmm. um, also, you see the, uh, Bandai Namco is actually making Pokemon Snap. So yeah. <laughs> with that, the the Pokemon Company and Bandai like they they have different they have different priorities. They have different art teams. They have different programmers. So true. I mean, I, I really love the Bandai Namco team. I think they do a tremendous job on the Switch. We mm -hmm. we freaking love Dragon Ball Fighters, and yep. uh, the port of Nino Kuni that I just picked up on the summer sale is really solid. I'm very pleased with all of my recent Bandai Namco Switch purchases. Mm -hmm. So with that, I kind of have some trust with them handling the franchise. Maybe we'll they've been, get a... They've been helping Nintendo a lot in the background these last couple of years, and like it's definitely appreciated by me as a fan. I think Nintendo Switch is really lacking an abundance of arcade titles when I think it would be such a great system for it. That's and I fair. think Pokemon Snap, in a new online era where we are sharing the photos and going after high scores, I bet there'll be some... like friends rankings where you can try to snap better pictures of Pokemon than your friends if they... Mm -hmm. Because as we've also seen, Bandai Namco is usually pretty smart about online suites. So, I'm hoping... I, I'm I'm optimistic about this one. You know, this I think I'm more optimistic leaving this presentation than you are, but I think that's mainly due to Pokemon Snap. Yeah, it's... I. The thing is, I understand why it's such a big deal to so many people. I do know a lot of other people that love this game again i just i just have no connection to it so it doesn't really call it to me yeah it's 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 not a, it's not an internet breaker like let's be honest you and i had a conversation the other day where you know i said something to the effect of you know when when square enix announced final fantasy 7 remake for the ps4 they broke the video game industry because people just like clamored for this so hard but again with pokemon being as big as it is now like this might be the game that people are looking for in all honesty it's something different it's something pokemon and again accessible by a lot of people yeah, I I must agree. And with that, there's there's plenty of new Pokemon content to also talk about with the with the release of Isle of Armor. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I I got to run around the island yesterday for a couple of hours. Everything's kind of easy from the get go, and you could probably breeze through this pretty quick. But though I don't know how much content is actually in this DLC pack because I haven't really looked. Um, the, I will say that the locales are better constructed than they were 
for the main wild area in in Sword and Shield. I think that they definitely spend a little bit more time with this. I will say from a technical standpoint, the game, it's not like the game looks much better or runs much better. Like I found the same issues that I've always had with the online that as soon as I connect to the internet with Pokemon Sword and Shield, the game just starts chugging and I get some frame rate drops and it just kind of seems to go very slow. Yeah, so right now I, I have to say uh, my experience with the DLC is limited, but I'm sure that we'll have more chats about it down the line and I can fill you in a little bit more then. Yeah, we'll look forward to your take on the DLC after you've spent a little more time with it. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we really just have uh, speculation about next week. We don't really know, but the Pokemon Company said that next week, well, as of, as of we're releasing this on Monday, so this week there's more news to come. And as I said before, like, Nintendo rumors are wild. Like, wild. People just find an idea and run with it. So, the one this week, the thing that I read, like, right after I watched this thing was, you have to look at the toys on the shelf behind the presenter, because they have a, a pack, like, a, it looks like a, a dual pack of a game with a Switch there, and they have Eevee and, or, what is it, Umbreon and Espeon sitting there, and it's all, like, Gen 2 Pokemon sitting on the middle shelf, and, oh, this means that a Let's Go sequel is coming. I have to tell you, I don't need Pokemon Let's Go, the video game, the sequel. Like, I, I think it was a cool novelty for Kanto, but I think that, like, we've seen these kind of, like, we've seen remakes of these games already. Like, we've seen, like, multiple remakes of, like, Red and Blue now, and Yellow. We've seen remakes of Gold and Silver, you know, we had Heart, Gold and Soul, Silver on the DS. And those games were really great when they came out. Like, there's nothing wrong with those. I just kind of wish that, like, honestly, if this is taking from, you know, resources that could be working to make Pokemon Sword and Shield better, then, I don't know, I, I would prefer that those resources be put elsewhere. If this is true, if this is true, which is, there's a big disclaimer on that. Yeah, I, I honestly don't really have much speculating to do. I, I, I don't really, I don't really know what, I, I think the let's go is certainly a possibility and I would meet it with a, yeah, okay. But other than that, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're gonna throw at us if they think it's worth two presentations. This is true. Yeah, if I guess if they if they feel that it's worth something that merits its own presentation or, or another one, you know, it could be something worth really noting. Or maybe this is just how they drip feed us from now on with with the phone games. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I just really hope that you we're know gonna what? hit we... another year of online and we're like N sixty four and they're like, no. No is another free app. Yeah. Based on battle toads. Ugh. I have to tell you, I just, I really hope by the end of the summer that we hear something that, like, either, like, you know what, Zelda is coming, but it's been delayed, and here's another trailer to tide you over, or, hey, guess what, we got another Mario Kart on the way, and here's a trailer for that. Those would be the two things that I hope for the most at this moment in time, I have to be honest with you. I really, like, the Zelda thing is exciting, but I, I, I really am ready for another like multiplayer game that a lot of my friends are going to get involved in where we spend too many hours playing all together like we did in the old days of mario kart and i do think strongly that mario kart could be that big hitter but will nintendo reveal that for us that remains to be seen yeah in all honesty it's gonna be hard to tell well folks i think that's it for us for us today thank you so much for watching for more nerdy content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, we hope you leave this video ready to pick up a pro controller, a paintbrush, or a pen. I'm Backrolls. And I'm Mac Fraser, and this has been the Nintendo Nerds. <laughs>